So, to all our lovely Patreon patrons, welcome to your August behind the scenes video. Uh, I chose to sit out in my garden to do this little bit because it suddenly got very warm again today. And that's what it's been like this uh, this month, hasn't it? Uh, certainly in the UK. Um, all the very hot weather and now the drought situation and all those sorts of things. It's been a very strange month. But then August always is because it's midsummer and everybody's traveling. All the company have been very scattered. Um, and uh, we have some nice videos coming up for you. Um, We've got one little piece of footage that Siegfried made on his holiday down in France um, because he couldn't take part in Romeo and Juliet online, but uh, the chorus is his favourite piece, um, pretty much of the whole of Shakespeare. So I asked him to record it, then we couldn't broadcast it. So uh, coming up here is uh, an extra little piece, a little treat to you, our patrons, uh, with our very best wishes as ever. Enjoy. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, will lay our scene from ancient grudge, break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows do, with their death, bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love, and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Well, you have to love a bit of Shakespeare by the sea, don't you? Um, so what do we have to talk about this month? Well, um, again, it's been comparatively quiet because still scenes live is not up yet and running. Um, but Valentina has been enjoying posting uh, selected offerings from our back catalogue, um, which I very much hope you guys have been enjoying as well. Um, here follow a few videos by uh, the cast of Romeo and Juliet, which we did online uh, on the, what was the date? Uh, 21st, I think. Um, of August. Um, it was from my point of view, give you a little bit of extra behind the scenes, uh, it was quite a lively production in some respects because um, on the Tuesday before we uh, we were due to perform, uh, we we managed to, well, we, uh, we lost two members of cast. We lost Mrs. Capulet, who is not a lady, as I said at the interval, um, and we also lost Juliet. So uh, that was quite lively because uh, Dewey and I were traveling and I was throwing out relays of messages, as we always do. And, of course, we very wonderfully and beautifully acquired the fabulous Jenny uh, to play our Juliet. And um, Ellie came back and stepped in as Mrs. Capulet. Um, so that was all wonderful. And it's always funny because when I cast a play, I always feel, oh, that's it, that's going to be wonderful. And then there's almost always at least, you know, there's some changes happen. Um, and then I can't imagine it being anybody else. So it's always the right cast. And um, uh, it was a very enjoyable production. Um, it's interesting because, and I don't think it's because Romeo and Juliet is a very familiar play. But um, from my point of view as the prompter sitting uh, in, my, in my corner with, because everything goes through me, I'm watching, you know, who's up on online, who's fallen off the call, who's texting me, because I get texts as well as uh, messages in the chat from people. Um, and there are questions come up on the chat and you're trying to answer everything and still follow the text and keep everybody going. Um, but the interesting thing about Romeo and Juliet is it just flowed. And again, I really don't think it's because it's from, just because it's familiar, but there's something about the text and I was been thinking about this, and I think if you look at plays like Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, 
Midsummer Night's Dream. There is not a duff moment anywhere in them. All the lines are fabulous and they just flow. And I think coming close to that, you've got Julius Caesar and King Lear as well. But it's just, it just intrigued me because it just, I don't know, it seemed to go so well and everybody did very well. And of course, the fights, as ever, were epic. And we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Anyway, enough of me. Here come the cast. So we've uh, not long finished this afternoon's Q script performance of Romeo and Juliet. Um, and I, uh, I'm still a bit sort of um, slightly dislodged and upset but that's because i've forgotten what an emotional ride this play is and how much it, how much it can put you through the emotional ringer um and i think one of the things that helps that happen and it's not a bad thing at all because it's about having an emotional experience or more to the point hope, hoping that the audience joins you on that emotional journey um but one of the things that really helps is having a strong point of view um and so at one point in, in the play, I got particularly upset and really lost my rag. But that was because of the, the point of view I had of my of my daughter, Juliet, who I love and is my only child. And has the, um, the all, all of my hopes and dreams are are contained within. And I've set up this great marriage for her, this wonderful groom who, who ticks an awful lot of boxes. And I've worked really hard on it. Um, and then she says she doesn't want to get married and five minutes ago she was really up for it and it's just no this is not acceptable and I have to lay down the law but if there's something else that I think this afternoon reminded me of is that it's a shame we only get to do it once um because you want it to really bed in and, and try it differently and um be able to just ha have more fun and experiment and um and and see and see where it takes you but it was still a huge amount of fun um it was great working with everybody particularly the people who are new who hadn't done it before because it can be a real baptism by by fire but um i think everybody had a ball um although i think that um ashley had so much fun playing the q show that it was probably illegal so um, I just need to go now and find out who to report that to, because that amount of fun playing a role, that's, uh, that just won't do. Hello, I just finished doing Romeo and Juliet, where I got to play Juliet. I was really, really very lucky to get involved because um, I actually um, was asked to do it kind of last minute because um, the original Juliet couldn't make it. So that's why I feel especially lucky and I think it was a great obviously it's a great role but it was especially a great challenge to do because I haven't really done much shake scenery so um I've only done one part uh one one play before and it was like you know small roles so this one's like really meaty really meaty and um it was brilliant really brilliant it really taught me how you can achieve so much in just a little bit of time um what the little things you can do that make a really big difference on screen on the zoom and I just yeah had a great time I thought everyone was brilliant everyone really captured their roles so well and we all worked together in such a great way and uh yeah I feel really lucky to play this role <laughs> just a quick word about last night just wanted to say that I absolutely loved Alexandra's portrayal of the studious Romeo and uh, in particular, the window scene, um, the balcony scene where um, Alexandra it was, was looking up. In my mind's eye, I just thought that she was hanging on to some undergrowth and that she might fall at any moment. It was brilliant. Anyway, I loved it. And so many wonderful performances by everybody. Thank you. Hello, I'm Max. I'm from the US. Uh, I played the roles of Gorringe and Soundpost. This was my first Shakespeare show, professional thing, Q-based show. So it was fun. It was a lot of very fun first experiences for me. Um, I think probably the most fun I had was, aside from the performance and meeting everyone and talking to these wonderful actors, uh, I made a mask for um, the masquerade and I think I spent a little too long on it. Um, but I 
had a lot of fun making this out of paper and string and a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, it was a great experience. Um, so much fun to meet and I guess re-meet in the case of Lizzie and Alexandra. I met them on a, uh, a trip to Oxford. I did a Shakespeare seminar, but uh, it was amazing to meet everyone. Um, they're so talented, so funny, such great actors. Um, and yeah, it was just a really wonderful first time to do Shakespeare and to do professional theater and to do a Q-based show, so yeah. Hello, this is Mark from Shake Scene. Thank you for watching Romeo and Juliet last weekend. Hope you enjoyed it. Those of you who uh, would like more, we're performing again, uh, this time in the flesh at Hilldrop Community Center on the 4th of September at 3 p.m. Hilldrop Road, N70JE. Hope to see you there for even more fun with Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet. By the way, because of the way that we do these, I don't even know who's going to be playing Romeo and Juliet yet, and I have scenes with both of them. See you soon. Bye. I'm just going to sneak in here and add to what Mark started saying about, uh, yes, we're doing uh, a much edited, it's a 90 minute version of Romeo and Juliet. Um, and it's a charity, well, it's to raise money for the Hilldrop Community Centre, which is local to Geraldine, who is, of course, one of our stalwarts. Um, and that's going to be on Sunday. Oh, my gosh. Um, so that's uh, that's in North London. Um, we were planning it out in the gardens um, at this, uh, this centre. Uh, the weather forecast is not clement. So we're now, uh, I'm in the process of rethinking it as an indoor show. And I'll be nipping up to Geraldine's on Friday just to make sure uh, how we're going to do it. It's going to be fine. They have a nice large indoor hall. But um, yeah, you plan these things in the summer when it's all hot, 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 sunny. And then when you do it in September, eh, not so much. Anyway, so um, that's what we're doing. That's the only other live in-person thing we've got planned for this year. Um, be talking to Valentina about what we do next year quite soon. Watch this space. Hello, uh, so this is just a quick video just for me to talk about the production of Romeo and Juliet, which we did um, on Sunday, which is uh, at the time of recording. This is Friday, so it's going on for a week ago. Um, but I, I just wanted to put some thoughts to camera. Um, first of all, I, I enjoyed this again because I had lots of little roles. And I, although it's always nice to play a bigger role, but actually there's, there's a great deal of pleasure to be found in playing a few smaller roles because you get to vary the character a little bit. Um, and you, uh, I got to play characters on both the Capulet side and the Montague side, um, because I was, um, uh, playing Samson and Peter, who are both Capulet sided people uh, and then I got to play Balthazar in the last few scenes um, and Balthazar is one of the Montague team he's uh, Romeo's man as described um, so I got to play on both sides of the uh, 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 of the fight so to speak in this uh, that was good fun um, I was really interested to see what can happen when you have a character that has a bit of a through line not a full through line Peter Peter's an interesting character, um, at least in the way it was set up. Now, I've got a few extra lines which were based on uh, being a useful character to turn up and do a particular job. Um, so, for example, uh, there's a scene towards the beginning I come into, uh, which is a scene with uh, the nurse, Juliet, and Juliet's mother. Um, and I get to interrupt them and sort of, yeah, ah! uh, there's chaos going on behind the scenes. Uh, but with that particular character... There's a, little, there's a little scene which I actually didn't know about, which is where Peter's talking to the musicians. And all through the play, he's been something of an idiot, but he turns out to be a little bit more savvy than I think we've given him credit for up to that point. You know, he knows what he likes in terms of music. And uh, he's, he's quite sort of, uh, yeah, vicious with some of the musicians. Um, uh, when they can't play what he wants them to play. Anyway, that was just really interesting uh, and, and a good insight into bits of the play that I think I wouldn't otherwise get to do. So there we are. Those are my thoughts. 
Hey everyone, this is just a quick video to chat a bit about Romeo and Juliet and playing Mercutio, which I completely loved. It is, I mean, he's just the most fantastic part to play. The language is insane. The poetry is incredible. I just had the most wonderful time. And I think one of my favorite bits of playing was with Alexandra just playing you know with these characters and playing with the language and performing with someone who gets the language the way she does is always a gift for an actor so yeah that's that's my feedback that's uh, that's how I feel I love the play it's one of my favorites it's just so smart and poetic and um, making sure it's a dream role so I loved it thank you bye so that's kind of us for this month. Um, don't sign off the minute that I'm gone, though, because there's another little note from me um, uh, following at the end of this. But, um, well, we've, we've talked about this month. Next month, as you know, we've had to jiggle slightly with our schedule, as advertised. So Sunday the 25th is going to be Hamlet online. And then in October, it will be Othello. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. Um, and really hoping that I'll be able to bring scenes back live in October as well. So uh, that'll be fun. Um, I've been collecting scenes out of the plays that we've been doing over the summer. So lots of new ones to do. Always good. Um, and yeah, that's, busy, that's pretty much us. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed your month with us and that the summer has been good to you. Uh, we look forward to talking to you at the end of September and see what there is to talk about then. Okay, see you then. So welcome to a quiet moment in Prompter's Corner. Uh, I decided to do a little extra chat this week because it's been a funny kind of summer and we've got a lot of things going on. Um, I'm going to start by sharing with you, our wonderful patrons, a change, a great change here in Prompter's Corner. Because um, I'm sitting in my regular chair, but you may notice if I lean back and hold the phone up, something's changed on the wall behind me. My uh, my trademark butterflies are tragically no more. Uh, I've taken the decision to take them down because I'm going to show you. Because, uh, for example, this is what these guys looked at, looked like when I put them up. And um, this is what they look like now. So basically what's happened is, so the story of the, of, of the butterflies, if you really want to know the history of, of, of my butterflies, um, I put them up during, I think, the first lockdown of 2020 because I spent a lot of time in this chair, either uh, doing my day job or just talking to people or doing the Shakespeare. And... Um, I got very bored of sitting in front of a blank white wall. And uh, so I thought, what would be make it fun? And I got these plastic um, butterflies and they have been lovely. And um, uh, they've been my trademark and they've been great company for the last couple of years. But with everything else in the world changing and basically the fact that they faded, I mean, <laughs> I did cheat a little while ago. I turned some of them over um, so that they kind of got a new lease of life. But fundamentally, it got to the point of saying, that's it. Farewell to the butterflies. Um, if anybody out there would like a butterfly as a souvenir, then you're very welcome. Um, the blue ones are still quite good. Um, and they come, sorry, that's the blue tack I've been sticking them up with. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're quite rare stalwart they've got a little pin so you can pin them on something as well so if anybody would like a souvenir of lockdown in prompter's corner then uh please let me know i'm going to chat more another time but that's the butterflies for now <laughs>